Welcome back. So the latest survey of consumer finances takes a look at American households' financial condition, and apparently it is showing that the wage gap is declining. So more on this topic to discuss the recent income data and growth in business equity for minorities. We've invited Brent Wilsey, president of Wilsey Asset Management. Good morning, Brent. Nice to see you on this Sunday. Good to you as well, Liz. Good morning. Good morning. So what does this mean exactly when we talk about the Federal Reserve stating and showing numbers that show that the wealth gap is declining? Kind of break it down and simplify it for us. Sure, sure. And this is very important because every three years, the Federal Reserve does this consumer finance survey, um, and it's for the past three years. And this went from 2016 to 2019. It's the most latest data. So what it shows is that this wealth gap has been declining through those years. And we take it down from wealth to income. Starting off with the income, uh, if you have no high school education over this time frame, you actually saw your income increase by 9%. If you had a high school education, your income increased over that period by 6.3%. However, if you had a college degree, it dropped by 2.3%. And also a lower side is usually the younger people because they don't have as much experience yet. People under 35 saw a, a, a jump in their income of 13.4%. Now compare that to 2010 and 2016, it increased only 5.8%, again, closing that income gap. But we also look at the wealth gap as well. And among the lower income group and, and, and the lowest income quintile, they saw the wealth increase by 32.5%. And then the second lowest quintile saw their wealth increase by 30.7%. And part of this comes from the growth in businesses for uh, and equities for minorities and blacks saw their business increase by 138%. Hispanics saw their income, not their income, I'm sorry, their businesses increased by 63%. And even those lacking a high school diploma saw an increase in business equity of 104%. And this comes from the gig economy, how easy it is now with online platforms, deregulations, the 2017 tax reform. So a lot of good positive things here uh, from that time frame of 2016, 2019, which I think we'll get back to again in 2021. So closing the wealth gap, is this key to recovering, for example, from the pandemic? It, it, it really is. And, and a lot of these businesses have really suffered through the pandemic. Uh, but I do have a lot of faith in the American people that they are relentless and they'll come back, they'll, they'll do it again and so forth. We got to get through this craziness we're in now. But a lot of these businesses will come back because people, they, they had the taste of how great it was and it's hard. I'm not saying it's not easy, uh, that it, that's easy. It is hard, but they will come back. And I think in 2021, we'll see a resurgence of what we had back in 2016 to 2019 because of how strong the American people are. Yeah, I know a lot of like global researchers, uh, many of them anyway, have more recently referred to the pandemic, not just being this health crisis, but also being a wealth crisis. Would you agree with that? Well, temporarily, yes, and, and that's when you look at when you look at 2020. Of course, they, they are they're right, but what we have to look at is that okay, 2016, 2019, how they've done it. Let's not look at where we're going to be next month, but let's look at where we'll be in 2022, 2023. That's what we have to look at. We've got to get back on track, and it's the American people. And again, the globe is something different. I'm more concerned with the United States here. I believe that most American people want to get back to where we were before. They'll work for it, they're relentless, uh, they will move forward. Okay, any other thoughts you want to add to um, what the Federal Reserve is showing as it relates to this? Well, I mean, the Federal Reserve and people might say, oh, you know, it's just a survey and so forth. Keep in mind, this is an extensive survey, how much they did, there's other data in there, but it was all, and it, it's not bias, it's just what is actually going on. And they spend a lot of time doing this, that's why they do it every three years, because there's a lot of data behind it. And, and that's why I really like surveys like this. It's not biased at all. It's an extensive survey. It's not like 45 people like some insurance companies do. This is an extensive survey of, of consumer finances for the American people. It's a great survey. And, and unfortunately, it's not brought out very much. I don't know why, um, mm. but it, it, it's there. There's great data out there. And again, it's very important. I think the American people will return again uh, back to this because they liked having that. And we still have the gig economy will come back. We have online services. There's so many reasons why we'll do well in 21, 22, and 23 again. 
All right. Well, we'll certainly look forward to all of that. Thank you so much, Brent. Good to see you on this Sunday. Take you care. You too, Liz. All right. Bye-bye. And on this Sunday, local fishermen, guess what? They're kicking off a new season with...